under the spotlight with your host Stafford Perkins. I am about, well, I am up and running and now I'm awaiting my very special guest, the most honorable Dr. Peter David Phillips to join me. I, you know, I do, I'm anticipating seeing him popping up on the screen anytime now. And um, we know that there's a, a time change. I'm not making any excuses this evening. I, the time change is here and we're trying to work with it. In Jamaica, it's, it's now seven o'clock in Jamaica. In here in the United States on the East Coast, it's eight o'clock. You know, wherever you are, wherever you're picking me up, I can't say all of the, the locations where people are, but this one here on the East Coast, we are now eight o'clock. What I'm going to do to keep, get myself ready and prepare myself and wait for Dr. Phillips and all that good stuff, I am going to play, uh, uh, well, a clip, all right? And I'm going to take this. And then we know that the budget is coming up on Tuesday. Um, based, based on what you're seeing happening in Jamaica, um, in terms of the living or people are struggling, but we hear the glowing reports. We are hearing all these glowing reports, how the, well the economy is doing, but yet still people are just not feeling it, not seeing it. We saw it in the most recently held um, election, local government elections, where people were complaining about not, not you know, feeling the economy based on what we have heard in this growing thing. What is your impression of what is going on with the economy and what you think can be done at this time? Well, I think what we, what we are seeing is a contradiction between the government's proclamation of prosperity mm -hmm. on the one hand, which is the mantra that they have, and the reality of austerity which most people are feeling. Now, let's be first with the fact that the debt is coming down, the national debt is coming down, a process which started in 2013 and which the government has continued and which has resulted in certainly a, a greater amount of some fiscal space. But the... the the fact is that the, in order to do this, it has meant that they have had to, as, as was the case with the previous administration, it meant that a lot of the monies, the revenues contained, have had to go back to paying off debt and that there were a lot of social services which have been which have been unsatisfied. We have the problems with the hospitals who don't have enough. We have the, and and we are seeing people sleeping in corridors, etc. Add to that in the health sector, the enormously bad, the enormously bad project implementation in places like Cornwall Regional, which have seen the cost of the renovation rising steadily and still no, no completion date in sight. Mm. We see the, equally on the roadways, the community roads, um, that there is a very bad situation by and large what the government has been able to do is to is to build um, the highways basically with the uh, as an investment activity with some of the capital funds that they have had available, but there is there 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 is not as much money to go around as the government is 
suggested. Then, so that's one part of it. Austerity is the reality. Um, prosperity is the word that they have been building, and the austerity that the people experience is not just in government services, but is made worse by the fact that the inflation rates are higher than they were in the past. And the inflation rate now is running higher than the program. It's running at approximately 7% per annum. But in critical areas, particularly in food inflation, it's a very, it is running at more than 10% and plus that is that is happening there. So overall, as you saw, expecting the local elections, there's a lot of dissatisfaction out there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, let me say this. Um, I know you're a very modest man, even though you are one of great achievements and accomplishments and all that kind of thing. I just want to make reference to say that it was you, Dr. Peter Phillips, who started this, this process, this thing that has put the government showing these even surplus in the, in the current account. Um, talk a little bit and tell people what happened during the period and then come into it and talk about why. Can you, and tell me, can you see, are you privy to seeing in the books to say what, if these numbers that they're calling are true? I'm not going to question the, the numbers. You are correct. The process started. We, we in, 20, in 2012, when the, when the Porsche Miller administration um, started, we got an economy which was, which was floundering and we had been closed off from the capital markets of the world. The government had done a debt exchange in 2010 and in fact, had been so had so mismanaged the economy, the, the GLP government had so mismanaged the economy then that in fact they were not even going to be able to meet the commitments that they had entered into in that debt exchange. So we are in a bad way. The debt was climbing. The IMF had basically pulled the plug on their program, and um, the prime minister in his last days was promising bitter medicine because that was his acknowledgement that they had mismanaged the economy. He went to Washington and they told him that it was going to, he would have to undertake some difficult measures. He, in fact, and, and we had to undertake these very difficult measures to get the Jamaican economy back on track. It was a contribution by everybody, including the workers, the pensioners, the banking system, the private sector. Everybody had to pull together. And it's a credit to Portia and to the administration as a whole that what we that we were able to, to mobilize this collective effort on the part of the Jamaican people in that period. And so this is what this is what we really did. And the debt came down, the employment figures rose, unemployment was coming down in the period, inflation was down to five percent and below. And we were we were building up our reserves from what they were as about less than less than a month of um, import to over 12 weeks we were we had about 500 million 600 million net international reserves we climbed it to 3 billion approximately and we expected 
once they continued the program that we were on, that it would continue to grow. But I think to come to the present, what is the most striking thing is that we have not seen any sustained growth in the economy that would enable us to, to really get the economy revving and to, and to improve productivity in the country. There have been some investments, but, but the truth of the matter is that in terms growth numbers are programmed over the next three years to be approximately 1% per annum growth in GDP, which will mean lower productivity. Now I'm raising all these things, not, not really to score any partisan political points, although there are points to be scored in that sense. But I think the country must accept and I would hope that all the various stakeholders will recognize that the key objective if we are going to issue people, give people a better quality of life, the key objective has to be to secure more growth. There are some critical areas that are that are crying out um, for for some treatment. The agricultural sector. While we have made progress in lowering our food import bill and producing more of what we eat locally, this bill has climbed steadily over the past three or so years, four or five years. And what we are now is about 1.2, 1.3 billion dollars US of imports. There are lots of things, including, you know, concentrate for things like Surrey and June Plum and all of that, that we are, that we are importing. We, our sugar industry has been totally destroyed in parishes like Westmoreland and Clarendon, which is one of the reasons why crime and scamming um, is up in, particularly in Westmoreland and in other parishes as well. Our, our production of things like cocoa are at their lowest levels in decade and um, coffee is production is declining as well. So our uh, export crops are, uh, are and our food production is also at a very low level and prices for food as we mentioned earlier are, are high. We hope that you know, that in the entire budget debate that some of these issues will be addressed. At the same time, while we are pleased with the timing, with the growing levels of employment, we have to remember that there's a significant proportion of people, there are about 700,000 people outside of the labor force of those I would say probably approximately 300,000 or so are young people not in school, but who have just opted out. We need to hear of the training programs or something that is going to be underway to address people. The answer, in my view, is not to import labor, but rather to train labor. And to, and, to, and to also ensure that we can get the productivity levels of the labor force up. So training is not just a matter of getting those who are outside of the market, inside of the market. We need to deal with the things that are impediments to growth. 
another area that we really need to hear about, quite frankly, if we are going to grow the economy, is what is going to be done to reduce the cost of energy. Both the households, I'm talking about your light bill now, and your gas bill, your fuel bill, for your cars and your transport for companies. All of this, we have some of the highest energy costs in the region. In fact, and they are much higher than they were in 2015, 2016, when this administration took control, which is more than seven years ago. And you cannot get the kind of growth in manufacturing that we need if we are going to if we are going to face these high high energy costs which are running at close to 40 US cents per kilowatt hour. It just won't work. So all of these things have to be addressed. And we need to while you know there are things to be applauded, particularly in keeping the debt going down. What we need is some measure of imagination and we need better management of projects so that we don't have to keep announcing things like Cornwall Regional and its completion every year um, in, in what is going on in the, in the budget. And we don't have to have the kind of fiasco that we have had in the construction of the Southern Coastal Highway in St. Thomas and those areas. And the, and the big crisis that we have had in um, sugar, when people were telling us that it wasn't going to be a problem at all, and they had it under control. All right, let me, let me kind of break in here a quick second and just explain to people what is going on. Good night to all my um, the guests who have joined on. Oh, um, and you're um, you're listening to the voice of Dr. Peter David Phillips, the Honorable Dr. Peter Phillips. And what happened is that there seems to be a technology breakdown somewhere. So I've not been able to bring him bring him bring him live his face live on the screen. I am in the meantime while he's even talking, I'm communicating with my backroom people to see if anything can be done. It gave me some suggestions. I'm not going to try any of it this evening. It's going to be too distracting. It's already distracting me. But um, so far, we, we figured a way out. We are working with a telephone. I quickly pulled up a, um, a picture of him, and it's on the screen. But what I want to do is just ask those who have joined, please, I'm going to ask you to support this program by um, subscribing, by liking, and make a comment, uh, you know, say say something like thumbs up if you like it. And if you want to hear more, we're going to try to go on. I think it's working fine now, Dr. Phillips. We can see your face and we're hearing your voice and it's coming over nice and clean and clear. I'll have to do some editing when I'm finished, but it's okay. Um, this is the way technology has its way of just failing us at the time, at the time, the most important times. But yeah. we can must yeah. always figure a way to get around and we have figured a way around it. Now... What, what One of the things I remember when you did that deal and you got your first break because you asked people to tighten the belt, to hold strain, to grit their teeth and grin and beard and work through. And you promised people that the first time you see any kind of, you know, breakthrough where some money would be free, you know, make, come available you would give it back to the workers. But unfortunately, you guys left office right at that time. And of course, people, somehow they never did the calculation in their heads, right or on paper. They, choose, they chose that 1800 or it was 18,000 that they were promised and gave up on all of that money that you had promised them. I remember the first money when, some, when the thing broke, I would say the fever broke. And when you had re you had reduced that, when you had re when you had reduced that um, current account, the number it was you were working with like a seven seven percent, or and then it came down to six point something percent. The first time you got maybe a quarter point off, you were able to 
I think take back in a four billion dollars into your into you know operating the business. I don't know if it was, I can't recall if it was when you were there when you after you left, but that four billion became available. No, they do you know how much they have moved that from from your time until now? That number that well, I don't know what exactly the, 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 the truth of the matter is that there has been some some increase in the capital budget and but there is a particular concern in what has been happening with the management of the economy as far as the wage bill is concerned the the, the jury is still out on what has been done with the workers and the so-called uh, renegotiation of the of the civil service public sector wage negotiations because what has happened in effect is that they have made some increases but they have withdrawn some allowances and and they allow still workers that has uh that claim that they are in fact no better off and yet the wage bill has gone up tremendously the go and of course at the same time remember 25 percent of this or so comes back in taxation to the government um but Many of the workers are not materially better off. And at the same time, what we are seeing is a, is a sharp increase overall on the, on, the, on the wages to GDP measure for the public sector. So I think... This is one area that I would expect some clear statement on the part of the government um, as to what the overall cost is, what the overall effect on public sector workers um, is, and how these costs have been apportioned within the different segments of the public sector because it is, there's no doubt especially when i listen to recent utterances from the jamaica civil service association that there is considerable disquiet particularly um among traveling officers who, who are claiming that they are being put at a disadvantage so again we need to know one thing is clear that you know, while the wage bill, while the, while the debt service costs to the government are coming down, we can't afford to end up with a reckless management of the public sector resources overall and start creeping up uh, a, a wage bill which was brought down below 10 percent coming from where it was 12 brought down to below 10 percent into nine percent and now gone back up to 12 percent um it's without any clear benefit in productivity or efficiency in the public sector because daily we are here with reports of how cumbersome the bureaucracy still is, how difficult it is to get um, project approvals out of the public sector, how difficult it is even for the public sector procurement to take place. So, you know, this is a, this is a point of concern for the economy as a whole. Uh, let me play a tape. Um, I'm not sure if the right one, if not, I'll play another one. But let me play it with the Prime Minister. And I'm going to. 
once you solve the fiscal issue, then you don't have to worry about whether or not you're going to have to face new taxes. The, the risk of new taxes always exists if exogenous shocks happen. Politicians are always going to be tempted to win over the electorate by making expenditure promises that will end up in new taxes. Why? Because the electorate does not always make the connection that every new dollar of expenditure, if it does not come from economic growth and expansion, it must come from borrowing or new taxes. I wish that the Jamaican electorate would not fall. But let me ask you this. Is what I heard the prime minister saying, you know, and I still wanted some answer, you know, for you to talk a little bit back on this. Because I said, I wrote down some of what he was saying. He said, recorded, they said, well, it's, it's, it's the, the GG. He said that Jamaica recorded a surplus on the current account for the first time since 1966. What does that mean? That means that, in effect, that more money is flowing into the Jamaican economy in the current year um, on the trade account and investment account than has been flowing out of the economy. And the trade accounts and the inflows and travel and services and what we earn. Huh? Trade and services mainly coming in this year that has been flowing out, which is a good thing. You know, we earn in our way annually. That is a good thing, right? But at the same time, what we not seen and what we can't see in the in the unless we get some growth and more importantly unless we get productivity is is the steady improvement in the quality of life for the average Jamaican. You know, the, the workers are still facing this huge burden of high inflation. The contract workers, including the security guards who got a court judgment that said that their conditions of work should improve, are still not getting what the court had ordered for them. Contract workers generally in the economy are still facing um, very low wages and difficult times um, living or trying to live on, on close to minimum wage and without all the benefits of sick leave and pension and all the things that have been won for them. And these things have not been addressed and the government mustn't operate really with an announcement each year as if they have just come in to office. They've been in office now um, going going seven years or more, eight years. Right? But, but let me ask you this. Is, I heard him calling out for more productivity. Productivity and what, which sector? Because I'm saying we're not manufacturing anything. Where is he expected to get? And, you know, it was mentioned here too. But well, where is the sector uh, productivity expected to come from if we're not even manufacturing, we're not producing anything? Well, the, the, the point is that you have to we you, you have to shift the economy overall from just being a a low energy economy where you're where you sell the country's attractiveness to investors simply on the fact that you are able to offer low wages and in order to do that then you have to find other sectors to move oh, i don't know what the perspective i can't say to you because i've heard from the government speak to the question that you raised that is to say which sectors they're expecting this um productivity productivity gains to come from this is going to be something that they're going to have to they're going to have to spell out. But we do know that you can't really just hope to build it on the basis of low wage labor in, in tourism and in BPO sectors and with people earning close to minimum wage in large segments of your agriculture and your distribution sector, you know? 
it won't it won't work all right this one let me forget in this other question um if you're in this this position at this time and the economy is showing all the strength that they're talking about how would you deal with it what what would you do say for uh, for the workers if somebody would you know like somebody like myself a layman would say give them a hundred and i'm saying this give them a hundred percent increase because it was for the economy and and give and in, increase the minimum wage a hundred percent increase the pu the public sector earn uh, wages 100 percent. is that sensible thinking is crazy what would you do the government says that they have done a, a significant increase in relation to the public sector what we still the jury still out on what the net situation of the average worker in the public sector is since a lot of the allowances have been clawed back some obviously will have benefited the question is is who and where and what is it or what is the overall situation for the majority of the persons that are in the public sector the there is a serious question about the how you raise productivity in the economy as a whole and that obviously is going to have to be addressed and a point to some of the areas energy uh training and which would be needed. But here is the deal I'll make with you, Stafford. Mm -hmm. After the public debate is concluded, government speak, opposition speak, then let's have another discussion. And and All what right? and I'm gonna have my tech people sort out that problem in the back end. All so right. one one when you, the next time we get a chance, even before a program goes, for you to come and I'll, I'll contact you and you're available. And we work out the bug to see what is causing this. All right, because yeah. it should it should not be. You, you have come up on the thing. Yeah. Everything came up, but just not your voice. Yeah. All right. So we, All right. I really do appreciate you coming. Is there anything you want to say? We can expect just before you go. What should we be expecting them to say if you were the finance minister on Tuesday? Important gains have been made. We now need to build on those gains and not squander them by by either possible spending, allowing waste through corruption, or fail to make the right investments as part of public policy. That's what I would say as my final word. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining me. We're going to work out the bugs and get it right the next time. I, I'm looking forward to that thing, that offer, to first to look at it when everybody has made their presentation, our contribution, and we go over it again. Thanks a lot, Dr. Phillips. I want to let I want to say something before you go that you know you have a lot of late, especially the women. A lot of women are out there praying for you every day. You know, every time I go on social media, some big prayers being sent up for you. How is, how is your health? How are you doing otherwise? My, my health, thanks to God, is good. You know, and I'm, I'm really happy for my situation at the moment. Thanks to God, and I appreciate the doctors also. Appreciate We appreciate you responding to this. And good luck and keep taking care of yourself, sir. And we'll look, forward, we'll look forward to that other meeting. Thank you. Sorry about all the problems, but this is all technology okay. sometimes. No thanks. Okay. Have a great Bye. evening. Yeah. All the best. Yeah. Okay. We can hang up this call. Take out this one. And who is this? Ah, uh, is it that? Dr. Philip? I think we're trying to hang up on it. Might just die, but Dr. Philip? Hang up again. I think that was also. Yeah. All right. So, everybody who is still on, thank you for staying with me. You saw the truth. The trials and tribulations that I was going through, but we have a we had a very smart guest on the other end. He called in and it worked. You know, it's just something, <clears throat> something with my. I think it's the problem might even be on my end. So I'm gonna get my tech people to my bigger tech people on the back end, you know, the back room to go through this on this particular platform that I'm using. I suspect something is wrong, and between myself and them, we will sort it out. But the important thing, we still. 
managed to get an interview. And as you might have heard, to kind of make up where we are, what happened this evening, he, he has offered to come back after the budget, all the budget presentations have been made. And then we can go through each presentation and talk about what, you know, because what we were doing, we're, we're trying to preempt Tuesday, preempt them on Tuesday and to say, this is what, you know, we, I'm hearing, I'm hearing a bunch of stuff. And as Dr. Phillips says, something is not adding up. It's <laughs> because you're here, you know, even when they talk about productivity, productivity is when you get the most out of say an hour or a day or a month or a year, whatever it is, you you might be doing 10 items of something, producing 10 items of something per hour. But if you increase productivity, you find a way to increase productivity, you're going to produce maybe 15 or 20 of the same items in that hour and that gives you more money. That's one of the things. So we hear the prime minister talking about productivity and we have to increase productivity, but productivity in what? And I think I think Dr. Phillips kind of concurred with me on it to say that um, you, have, you have to have production. And and it doesn't make sense to say you, 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 you're calling for productivity if there's no production. Production in what? We, we came out of cane. We should have figured out a way how to produce cane at a cheaper rate. That's where we'll be looking for productivity. We should have been buying machinery, machinery that can... Because the early days of men in the field chopping cane was not working out, it became unproductive. But if they had found a way to mechanize the system, we had enough land, we have enough land, and land is one of uh, cane production, one of the most resilient type of crop you can put in. You see the hurricanes will come and flatten the cane, but by the time the sun comes up, all the cane just stand up again. With banana, when they, once they break, once a bow or bend, they're going to break. So you lose with bananas. But cane, there's still value in, in, in producing um, sugar because it, you can convert it to energy. You can, um, you can do a lot of stuff with, 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 um, with sugar uh, thing. And we have the land and they're going idle. And we see the thieves moving in and taking pieces of them. And they come and promise they're going to do develop housing and they develop nothing. And, and so this is the kind of you know, thing. So we, we, we are going to be looking, um, watching. We've been here a while. Let me see what time is it now. It's about 9.15. We've, um, we've lost a lot of time in the beginning because the system was failing. And I, we, we struggled and we tried. I'm going to try and read a few of these. Um, if we see some good things here. Well, Drummond, uh, Joan Drummond, she's just probably just saying hi to Dr. Phillips. Um, and if she if she not hearing no about her 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 leader, she no want to hear from nobody else. Uh, G. Joan Drummond, she said good night, my comrade leader. And um, were would Doctor Phillips accept the? Would Doctor Phillips accept the? Who is this? Okay. Oh, Peter, I see you coming in there. Just hang on a second. Let me just go to some of these messages. Let me put you on on speaker so people can hear you. Um, Princess is saying, uh, Richard, Rich, Richard, uh, to Richard, to he's saying hello. Um, Princess, they say, would Dr. Phillips accept the Minister of Finance from JLP government based on the railroad economic situation? Boy, I, I, I sorry, I never got to ask him that one, but but hopefully, somebody here can might ask him. Uh, I, I'm the PM oldness, I don't know, I'm the PM oldness, I'm not so sure that. Princess is saying right there. Ah, uh, Princess again say an ID rather than real PM. <laughs> and I understanding the national uh, GDP and international GDP um, climates. I'm not sure about that one, but I know I'm. I hear Max. I hear him making some statements, which I was hoping to play some more of them. But unfortunately, the thing just failed me. And you know, we didn't. We have a program. I can edit out the, the first, the front of it, which wasn't so good, and it will still be a good program. Then we have um, Princess again to say fakers, uh, risers, bunting, golden. You know, they hacked the interview, but they can't 
keep a good man down no sir can't stop it i know a little bit about technology and you exactly and dr phillips understood to come in the way and the way he did and we had an interview all uh, well, 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 i'm not so sure what this one is uh, all um are able is uh this 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 um given to devotees something to pour concrete creating i'm not so sure what that is saying miss princess your fingers them putting out some words which is nothing but anyway we um we did hear from dr phillips he gave his perspective on the thing we, we got him to say a little bit what to expect and he's telling us some of it is some little flim flam things well he, well he never used those words let me not put words in more but to me what i you know deduce from what he was saying some of what they you know the, these reports let me see if i can play one of these reports that um i don't know it was giving me trouble me because uh, let me see i have two i have one here let me see what that we have to treat with 1.9 percent growth the election has shown us it is not enough is simply not going to grow the government's revenue enough to correct all the water supply challenges that exist, all the bad roads that exist, the need for better public transportation. It's just not, simply not going to do. Much more needs to be done to increase the pace of growth so, and so that we get more tax take. So from that, we can then deal with the issues that the lady in Northwest Manchester pointed out to me. She said to me, Prime Minister, I am not voting. She said, I am 70 years old. I cannot carry water anymore. That is a reality that we have to pay attention to. How do I solve it? I say to you, nothing can be done without a growing economy. And if you spend on the social issues, you sacrifice some growth, do you ease the suffering temporarily? But then you get back into the immiseration when you can't continue to spend because you, you don't have the resources within the political cycle that has to be sorted out um you know there are those who are in a celebratory mood and then there are those who feel that they were betrayed politically and i must pay attention to ensuring that the economy works but we must also make our economy care all right so so I, in this clip He's talking about that we have to do, you know, increase production or bring some kind of production into play. But in another clip, which I, I'm going to play that other one, he's talking about realizing productivity, but productivity in what? What are we producing? You have to be producing something. And then, as I said before, if you would be producing 10 items in an hour and you can get it to 20 items in the same hour, you have you now achieved pro a higher productivity rate. So, you know, with nothing, we, we're not producing anything more than guys on the corner every morning rubbing out their hand middle. That, that is the only thing I see that look, you know, any kind of thing one could consider. That's all I'm producing. People who are just, you know, you know, um, consuming, you know, endless amounts of, of hallucinating kind of allu hallucinogen or whatever the, the term is. And and so so um Peter um let me see if I can do the next thing that and then I'm gonna bring you in. Hold on a second. It's this wholeness again and this this the fiscal issue, then you don't have to worry about whether or not you're gonna have to face new taxes. The the risk of new taxes always exists if exogenous shocks happen. Politicians are always going to be tempted to win over the electorate by making expenditure promises that will end up in new taxes. Why? Because the electorate does not always make the connection that every new dollar of expenditure, if it does not come from economic growth and expansion, it must come from borrowing or new taxes. I wish that the Jamaican electorate would not fall for this. I will be the first to tell you that more must be done. But there is a parallel conversation that must happen. The only way to do more without collapsing the fiscal stability is to increase productivity. Wait for, and by the way, no other administration has given this kind of wage increase. The history of Jamaica's wage increases is that the government gives the wage increase and then takes it back with a wage freeze. This is the first time that we have been able to plan it properly so that we can even present the budget without the, the pressures. But we, we must all as Jamaicans be careful how we exert pressure 
because it will collapse our fiscal ecosystem and governments have to be strong to manage this. Um, I don't know. I think he, <laughs> it, sound, it sounds like he just, what they call it, word salad. He's doing a word salad kind of thing where he's just throwing out all these things and, and putting, dropping in some big sounding words in there. And and I'm thinking probably it's going to fly over some people's heads. But I started picking it up to say this. This man is talking some things which, it, it, if you really stop and think about it, I've been having a half an ounce a grain of idea of the subject, you'll realize that he's fluffing, you know? And this is what is so sad. I don't want to bring politics. It's not, this is not a political show. I'm to bring you shortly, Mr. Peter. Just hold on a second. It, this is not politics evening. This is this is on the economics of the thing, of, on the economy. And, and we are going to be having a budget reading on Tuesday. That's Tuesday, March 12th. And, and and we're going to be seeing, you know, Nigel Clark doing the stand out doing this thing, and then at some year maybe a day or two after, you know, um, wholeness is going to come in, and he's going to give a glowing thing. He has given all these glowing things about, you know, he said uh, this is Jamaica recorded a surplus of our current account first time since 1966. The Fitch rating come back is not fully investment grade yet. But it is, um, they say, speculative grade. When you get a BB minus, you're at, you're at speculative grade. So you're not there yet for investment for the big boys to come in because they don't think. Because there's really nothing happening. But somewhere in there, they're, paying, they're creating this fluff and this bouquet of you know artificial roses or something. Um, they, they also talked about we have had we have had 10 consecutive quarters of growth since, since the pandemic. No, the the growth that they're realizing is 1.9. When you hear some countries, you know, doing some growth, when they tell you about uh, growth, what they have realized, growth in their economy, you're talking about three, four, five, six. We just managed after ten consecutive periods of growth. Why is it we're growth, growing zeros or what? So uh, our point zero 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 something. You know that that kind of thing is the whole thing is not adding up, and this why you know the program went and we got as much as we could have gotten out of Dr. Phillips under the circumstance. Um, and then we said the net is also said the net international reserve is growing. This is some of this what I'm reading here is coming out of what the Queen's or uh, the King's representative, the, the the King of England's representative, who is the boss of Jamaica, the Lord Overlord for Jamaica. He's the one who, who the, the GG represents. We, the Jamaican people, we are paying him um, $30 million a year to just come read that throne speech. And he's expecting what he's expecting the country to be producing for England. And so I'm just going down some of the things he said that the net international reserve has been, he didn't give a specific number, but that is, it is at a, one of the highest. He should have first ever... To, to the point where now Jamaica has issued the first ever Jamaican linked um, uh, a bond. Jamaica established it's, it's it's in the value of about three hundred million dollars. I don't know what they're going to do. What they're going to pay down debt? We don't know yet. Unemployment, he said, is at four point two percent, one of the lowest in the history of independent Jamaica. But if, if unemployment was that low, I could see people demanding higher wages and getting it. But that's another story that we'll have to watch to see and to do some digging and to some investigating to see what kind of how people's lives are. Have they been improving? What does this mean? Recorded a balance of payment. Um, all right, I'm going to leave that one because I think I did something I left off there. In September 2023, the S&P, even last year, the S&P had given us the Standard & Poor's rating agency had given us this rating of, of BB, double B minus, BB minus, which is the what Fitch, the, another rating agency, gave us this year. Um, and they said that um, Jamaica's NIR, the net international reserve, that means the money, the uh, hard, hard currency like the dollar, we are, they say it is at a record high. And then Jamaica's economic performance is exemplary. So we are, you know, we are hoping, we are listening now because if everything is going so good, why is it? What I heard strange, what the, 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 the one of them was the prime minister said, 
is that his thing is that if it is doing so good, he's going to be producing, he's going to be um, building more roads and building more whatever, fixing up buildings and things. But the thing about it, he said that is what he thinks the people will want most, get the roads fixed and all that. But the people, they want money. People want money. They, they, they can't function. They can't survive off of the little pittance that they're getting. And I think it's time. I'm listening. What I'm listening for is to hear some serious talk about increasing people's incomes. The fact that you are showing all kinds of growth, signs of growth, and all those kinds of things. Peter, you've been waiting a long time, and I appreciate that. What you have to, what's your contribution on today's thing? Uh, good evening, Mr. Perkins. And uh, as you just said to yourself, I don't mind waiting, especially to follow the, uh, the estimable Dr. Um, Peter Phillips. That man is a great, handsome hero in Jamaica that people on both sides of the aisle, JLP and PMP, and everybody who's a Jamaican, really and truly should give this man his props because Dr. Phillips pulled the country out, put it on his back, and pulled the country out of us. Don't watch spiral. If you look at the reading of the Wall Street Journal and the Financial Times and all of the big new financial papers and get on the and even on television, they talk about Dr. Peter Phillips and what this man did for the island of Jamaica. In fact, it's something that people are coming in and studying as a person. Them literally studying it at the IMF and the World Bank and other central banks around the world. Throughout the uni the university the systems of America. Mm-hmm. That all the university systems of, of America are studying, and the world are studying what Dr. Peter Phillips did on the foundation this man laid for the island of Jamaica. So once again, we need to pick him up. We need to get one of them big um, OBEs or whatever they call it from, them, from, the, from the king or whatever. No, I don't think I don't I don't think he wants that kind of accolade. I think he would have preferred to get some when Jamaica fixed it. Fix the fixes the uh what them call it the constitution whatever the honor that we will give you know high honor that we will give. I think that's more the the, honor the, the, yes. I think he will he will he, he will uh, he would have um be, you know very deserving of it yeah but, but getting back to Mr. Burke's question about the economy you now you know Dr. Phillips make a very good point you know but the point that we've always said before about these poverty jobs you can't pay rent. You can't pay light, you can't buy clothes, you can't buy food, you mm. can't buy hope, you can't even buy dreams. Mm. But you have a job, a yeah. poverty job, Mr. Perkins. Yeah. We have to break the maker out of this poverty job cycle. Yeah. And one of the ways that we can do it, Mr. Perkins, because you, I know you have talked about it before, is the housing trust. Take that housing trust money, the $11 billion a year. And farm a holding trust bank, capitalize it with a holding trust bank, Mr. Perkins. Mm. 11 billion. They never, they never throw in that bank, they call fractional lending in Mr. Perkins. Mm. They leverage the capital, the 11 billion, and you can make a 110. If you do a 10 to 1 ratio, or even an 8 to 1 ratio, you can make a 110 billion, mm. or, even, or even 8 and 10 billion dollars worth of arm, um, worth of loan. You understand my yeah. point, Mr. Perkins? Yeah. And then, and then you can start lending the money out at low interest rate, one or two percent. Yeah. You lend the money out to, to, the, to the civil service people and the, 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 the junior doctors, them, the nurses, the, the firemen, the police, the teachers, them. You feel a middle class is a purpose. You lend mm. them out that say, listen, we can lend you one and two percent to go buy an apartment, a house. Mm. And you lend out the money also, Mr. Perkins, to the developers then. Yeah. So the developers them say, listen. You're going to be eligible to get a low income loan from this housing trust bank yeah. to build apartments. Yeah. Three or four bedrooms. We don't want a one bedroom because people want a family. They want to grow. Yeah. And you say you're going to build three or four bedroom apartments. Nice big skyscraper apartment, Mr. Perkins, that you have in America yeah. and all over the world. And I see your point all over the world, Mr. Perkins. And you have parks. You know, yeah, I love the park and all that stuff. The yeah. park and the children can go and play. Yeah. And swimming pool, tennis court. Yeah. And that's so why you feel well, Mr. Perkins. Yep. And it's the same thing. You talk about the head. The little head money that we have every 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 year. They put on the 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 the
Nous venons de faire des monnaies en forme d'infrastructure banque. Et le deuxième thing que nous avons fait en Indonésie, en Thaïlande, en Singapour, en Malaysie, en Malaysie, en Malaysie, en Malaysie, en Malaysie, en Malaysie, en infrastructure en Malaysie, en Malaysie, en Malaysie, Mm. And let it out. We don't have to borrow no more money from China or the um, IMF or World Bank and all that stuff. Mm. You be a plan now. Take the money from the head. Farm an infrastructure bank. The same fractional lending where car homes mm. and Perkins. Yeah. And start laying out the money to the developers them to come out and say, build the highway area, fix the road, but fix, make highway with half ramp Mr. Perkins. No more this stupid <laughs> highway business. <laughs> I, I wait to know where. <laughs> I wait to know where. One way, one way, I wait to If you live in America, you know. One of the things that we can do, you know, Mr. Perkins, when they do, in a, like in a, in a Thailand and all of our places, you know. Then, when they do, you know, they take the head money like that, they're doing on the farm infrastructure bank, then they farm, but they call a quasi private corporation owned by the government who borrow the money from the bank and then go to the people who are contracted and say, You want you bill. Yeah. And get the government get the money back. Then take and build half ramp and develop the land. Yeah. But the half ramp is so the government can be in the development as this is of selling the land to the developers. Then the CM holding trust money now can go to developers and pick up build apartment building, build resort, build different things for the land and come off of the highway, build factory. Mm -hmm. But people don't have to go to work, Mr. Perkins. Yeah. But now have this highway when you have no half ramp. Yeah. It's straight because guess what? You buy the money from China, you buy the money from, from France, you buy the money from America. And when they buy the money from people in the highway, they're not in the half ramp because they said you have to drive straight so they can get them full money back to pay back for the highway. Yeah. And they make no sense to the Yeah, no. So that pool of a land beside the highway, they might be. Yeah. And you know that we have a half ramp. You know, I'm going to wear that and the one way straight. Boy, I tell you, it, I'm going to have to, you know, I, I'm I'm kind of putting, we know we're going to have to wait maybe another, we don't know how long before we, we get to another political fever pitch time. But now we have to try and get in some of the good, the brilliant minds in Jamaica to come and start talking about this thing. You know, unfortunately, our technology thing failed us this evening. I just want to say thanks to everybody who joined and who stayed with the program. I want to also ask anybody who joined this program and uh, who come up on this program, I'm going to ask you to like it, to subscribe, and to give it that thumbs up thing, and to make a make you know say something, you know, make a suggestion, you know, make a comment, anything like that will help in growing this channel. Um, Peter, I you know I have to go do some work on this right as I come off of here because I have to cut out all of the front part that wasn't good and to try to make it into a program. So I have to jump off right now because I don't want it out there too long like this, the way it went out. I appreciate your, your uh, contribution and it was some good um, suggestions. And we um, just want to look forward to after the budget is read and everybody does the thing, which is like a probably a month down the line that Dr. Phillips said, well, when it's all over, he promised he wants to come back. and. You know, we we'll try. We're gonna work and work on it. I, you know, work it out. Work out the kinks. There's a kink somewhere in there. I think I saw Dr. Phillips came on somebody's program once, and it's a similar situation was happening. So I'm gonna to have to figure it out. But the good thing is that we did figure out a way. We heard his voice. I put his picture up there, and so people know 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 what he looks like. And 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 we heard him, and he made up some solid points and some solid uh, solid contribution. So I want to thank you. I have to go work on this right now as we get off of it to cut out the front part, to edit it, and, and make it a, a little tighter than it is. All right, Peter. So thank you. If you want to say any last thing, say it, and then I'm going to jump off. Well, Mr. Perkins, all I want to say is just please like, um, share, and subscribe. And all of, again, we need to focus on eliminating these poverty jobs from the island of Jamaica. No more poverty jobs, Mr. Perkins. All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks for joining me and have a good night. And we will um, just close this off again by telling everybody, everybody, thank you for coming on. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for bearing it out until a, to a point where we could just put something together. I think we're going to still have a good program. All right. So I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. And um, it's how it goes. Maybe I'll come on Wednesday after the first budget presentation. All right, talk soon. Bye.